This is the Focus Odin 5 F3 3D printer. Is the Odin 5 a good travel printer? That's the question I'm going to try to answer today. Hi, I'm Ken, 3D Printing Survey Tech, and this is On the Road 3D Printing. Waiting for satellites. Right off the bat, a shameless plug. Please hit that bell to be notified of my next video. It really does help the channel. Let's get this right out of the way. This review is not sponsored by anyone but myself. I bought the Odin on September 26th, 2022. It was about five months ago today. I was planning on doing a six month review, but I feel confident that I have truly put it through its paces. To say that it is a well-traveled printer, is somewhat of an understatement. I had it delivered to my hotel in Mount Pleasant on September the 28th. I immediately set it up and got it running and it has been running ever since then. The setup was very easy and straightforward and since then it has been running pretty much consistently in 10 cities in five states having traveled over 7,287 miles. Every mile travel is in the floorboard back seat of my Elantra. First effects about the printer. The Odin 5 is a direct drive FDM 3D printer with a build volume of 235 by 235 by 250 on Z or Z. To the best of my knowledge, this is the first folding 3D printer. It comes with all the regular goodies plus a couple of extras some extra rollers, a ribbon cable, nozzles, flush cutter, and of course some wrenches. In my opinion, the flush cutter and the wrenches are a little bit small, but that's just my opinion. The bed it comes with is PEI coated glass. One of the only two changes I made to the entire printer the whole time I had it were to replace the glass bed, because me and glass do not get along, and I added a Creality spool weight. There are four screws, two on each side holding the iframe to the base. When you take those out, it folds down completely. Assuming you plan to travel with this, make sure to move the gantry all the way to the top of the frame not so that it doesn't damage the hot end. Currently, the only filament I have run through it is PLA. It's the only thing I use, it's the only thing I need to use, but I know it'll do quite a bit more. Now the pros. This thing is a beast, I mean that. Since being with me, it has had to endure scorching heat and freezing temperatures in my car while waiting on me to get off. Some of those days were below 30 and some of those were above 100. Both of those are in Fahrenheit, by the way. It's been moved from hotel to hotel to home to hotel to hotel and is still running great. I've only had to replace the nozzle twice and one of those was after running an entire roll of glow in the dark, which tend to be very abrasive. The only issues I've really had while printing stem mainly from me not taking the time to properly dial in the settings, something I did truly always intend to do, just never seemed to have the time to do it. I know they're going to be somewhat hard to see, but I did print a whole bunch of test prints and they came out Perfect. I did all of these on the Odin. I printed some more on my Cobra, but they came out quite well and they all match up perfectly. There are some cons though. I wish there was a way to lock the frame to the base instead of just screwing in the bolts. It does take a little while to get that gantry at a perfect 90. Um, can be done, it's just not fast. I do worry a little bit about the ribbon cables, but so far they haven't really been a problem. Um, I know other people have had problems with it. I didn't have any of those, and I had an extra one just in case. The only time it was a problem was when I bumped one um, while checking on a print. I actually bumped it and pulled it out of the hot end, but if you're careful, that really won't happen. Another con in my eyes is that there isn't a lever to help pull out the filament like my Cobra has and like every other printer I've owned before that has. 
Um, I don't know why they chose not to go that route, but they didn't. Kind of wish they had of. Um, it does have a filament in, filament out option. It does seem to work really well. I found it works better if you push the filament through and then have it back out as it doesn't tend to get stuck quite as often. For me, having some type of an ABL and a non-adjustable bed would have been a time saver. When moving to a new hotel, I, I, I can have my Cobra set up and running in just about five minutes. Um, I just plug it in, run a bed level, set my Z offset, and off it goes. Kind of wish that I had that with uh, the Odin. Unfortunately, it does take quite a bit longer. That time spent setting it up if you're moving around a lot might not be a, a bad detractor for everyone. It just kind of is for me. That's why it goes in the con section. But also, it's not that bad if you're not going to move it very often. Anytime I've had it set up in a hotel for quite a long time, it's done just fine. The only other con that I found is the fact that the, that the provided slicer, it's called the Focus Slicer, is just a really old version of Cura. I wish they had used a much newer version or preferably the current version. And I know that you can pull those settings into the current Cura, but for testing, I wanted to go with what they gave me. And it's just a very, very old version of Cura. Now the conclusion. Do I think this makes a good travel printer? I do. I'm not only happy with it, and the way it prints. I'm also pleasantly surprised at its, its ability to take a beating and keep on ticking. Granted, I'm not hitting it with hammers or anything, but I doubt that if you folded me up and I rode sideways in the back of an Elantra, I would fare as well as it did. Many of the changes I would like to see can be made on this printer, and some of them are on the Odin Smart. Although, as of this video, the Smart has not been publicly available to anybody but the Kickstarter backers. And it's been so long, I doubt it will ever be mass available. But who knows? If it does come out um, eventually, I will get it because I will want to test it out. In the end, it folds. It takes a decent beating, prints really well, and is overall a very good printer. It does suffer from some things, but overall, those are pretty much solid. It's not only a good printer, it's a really good travel printer. And that ends my review of the Focus Odin 5 F3. To those of you that are still watching, I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Watching your favorite creator's videos all the way to the end really does help drive engagement. Drop a comment with the printer that you want to see for my next round of reviews. And if you're not already, I highly recommend following me on TikTok where I do a lot of more short form content and have a monthly giveaway. Once again, I'm Ken, the 3D Printing Survey Tech, and this has been On The Road 3D Printing. Have a good one, y'all. Observation stored. Gotta get to the next part. I don't like that.